Computer and Science. Well, let's touch on one of the things the professor was mentioning there, this idea of an Asian space race. We can take you to the world's newsroom now and join Lebu, who is there for us. It's an interesting one, isn't it? How the reaction has been in India, Lebu, but also in China too. Absolutely, absolutely. And we're joining you now from the BBC's language uh, services, which are on the fifth floor here at New Broadcasting House. And this is what we're talking about, the Mars Orbiter mission that blasted off. We've had literally hundreds of comments on our Facebook page. Just to give you a, a few of them, uh, Vareen in India says this is a really great achievement and really, really proud of the Indian scientific community. Uh, we've got Daniel Sims from the UK who says it looks like they don't need our aid money anymore. And uh, Pranit Sharma who says it shows the technological prowess of the country. Aid money does not change the fact that this is an achievement. Now, obviously our, our language services have been covering this today and in the run up to it. And I'm joined now by uh, Shalu, who's from BBC's Hindi service, and Howard from the uh, BBC's Chinese service. Shalu, tell me, how have you been covering it, and what have been people, what have people on the ground been saying to you? Well, for Indian media, it's a big, big story, and it's been in the papers, on the telly, not just now, but since the beginning of October, so giving you a sense of how much it's been anticipated. And after the success of the Moon mission in 2008, it gave a lot of uh, Philip to the scientists, not just to the scientists, to the people, but also to the Indian media. So it's not su no surprise that Indian media is playing it really, really oh. big. But if you, if you talk about the people on the ground, I've, I've just got, got uh, to London from India just two days ago, and uh, BBC did this program called Exchanges on the, on the Frontier. It's a world service radio program. Uh, people can find it uh, online. And as part of that program, we spoke to a lot of youngsters there, so ranging from 10-year-olds uh, to 25, 30-year-old people. And they were really, really hopeful, as you read one of the comments uh, saying that, some, and some of them echoed it, saying that, we don't need uh, any international help to make our scientific uh, progress, uh, scientific missions uh, sort of, uh, you know, success, uh, successful. So uh, there is a lot of hope, there is a lot of uh, confidence in uh, Indian youngsters. Uh, and, but if you talk about uh, general people, common people on the ground who are not much inter interested in science, probably they're not too interested in the story. Now, uh, we heard in, uh, from the guests just before us that this is being sort of billed as an uh, Asian space race. How is this playing out in, Ch in China, Howard? What's oh, the reaction I'm, I'm glad there? you mentioned that on that notice, because uh, I was just checking out all the uh, web reports and uh, as well as the media reports in China. Uh, this event, India's launching of uh, the Mars mission, is also widely reported in China, but most of the Chinese media, their, their point is somehow why are we dragged into this? Because uh, we're happy for India to launch this, but we're never in a race with India. We're still playing catch up with the US, but in terms of uh, uh, launching capability and lots of other things, we're, we're, we're quite ahead of India. We're not quite in a race. So that was mainly the reaction from Chinese media. They, 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 they sort of looked bemused looking at the Western media, keeps, you know, who invented this story saying <laughs> we're in a race? That, that, that's the main angle so from China. There is no race. Yeah. We're ahead. It's, it's not quite saying that. So we're, we're behind in certain fields, behind the US by maybe 20 years, may, behind the Russians by 10 years. Uh, and, but in, in terms of broad um, uh, uh, capabilities between China and India, we're, we're still ahead. So in a sense, we're not quite in a race. And uh, also India and China, as even the Indians uh, uh, chief for the space program has also mentioned, are, are, are sort of developing on slightly different trajectory and the focus is like different. So uh, the, the Chinese media just sort of mainly, mainly saying, okay, we really, really don't understand why we're dragged into this. Just uh, one last quick question to you, Charlotte. On, on our Facebook comments, one thing that did keep coming up was the fact that India has quite a disparity between rich and poor. There's a lot of poverty. Should India really be spending this sort of money on a space program now? Is this the best use of money? What are you hearing? Well, it's fair enough to say that India has a lot of poor people and, uh, you know, that we don't have enough money to feed those people. But then there is other side to how science is progressing in India and how moon mission has been so successful. And a recent example was the cyclone filing that, that came in India. And just because we were so advanced in our science, we were able to uh, prevent thousands of deaths. So that was one, one instance where people saw the importance of science as well. So you have a mixed uh, opinion about uh, 
how science and uh, development should go hand in hand in India. Well, a mixed opinion there, and the Chinese saying we're not in competition with China, we're uh, uh, with India, we're ahead already. Thank you so much for coming on, Shalu and Howard and uh, Lucy. We have to wait another 300 days before they'll assess whether it's been a success or not. It won't be till 2014. So until then, I guess it's watch this space. Yeah, 300 more days of debating. Labour, thanks very much for joining us from the world's newsroom.